She groaned loudly, pushing her door shut. The Ministry of Morale just launched their 20 something surprise investigation this month. Every pony was on edge already. She wasn't sure how much more of it she could handle. Not that the MOM cared. Bumbling about in her apartment, her hooves poked lazily at the keypad on her safe room. A few moments later, she placed the books on the table inside. It was a cozy little safe room. There was no stable tech stable, but the Ministry of Wartime Technology had bought them for all the apartments here. It was cheap enough considering Stable Tech was just going to scrap them as a failed project. They were built like tanks and had a durable enchantment. They were a failure due to their lack of radiation protection. But the Ministry was able to throw in an easy repair talisman on top, linking each room to the landfill facility that was built on top, for cheap experimental repair in case some pony decided to force their way in. The whole scenario wasn't a common thing, but it allowed researchers like her to take their work home and have it still technically secured, all while letting the Ministry of Technology try out some experimental security measures. It was perfect for the non-classified, but still confidential work she and her co-workers had been slammed with for the past five months. She grumbled, wiggling out of her work clothes before tossing them onto the floor and stepping out of the safe room. She needed a bubble bath and a nice snack before a six-hour sleep, and then another grueling eight-hour work shift. She didn't blame the rest of her co-workers for just crashing in the break room. Something caught her eye as she slowly bumbled her way into the bathroom. A small flashing light on the answering machine. She looked at the bathroom and shrugged. Coming over to the machine, she checked to see that it had come quite literally seconds after she'd gotten off work. The short distance from the facility and the apartments told her that she'd likely missed it by only 90 seconds. Without much care, she pressed the button, only half listening. Alarms sounded in the recording, while which earned her attention, but the voice she knew so well was even, as if it had been filled with fear, but only now regretted remained. Honey, I know I was never around, and I know I won't be around. I'm so sorry, Lexi. I... I can't even blame this on the war. I was not cut out to be your mother. I never was, and I never will. I'm so sorry. I... I don't know what else I could possibly say. I failed you. I failed myself. I failed the princesses. I failed that stupid Twilight. I failed Equestria. I know you're labeled VIP for the stable due to your project, so listen to me. Get to your stable. Don't wait. Just get to your stable. Drop everything and just go. The answering machine kept going, but a sharp noise rang out and the call was cut. Whatever happened in the recording was unknown, and combined with the warning it left a haunting, sinking vibe lexicon shaking. Rushing to the radio, she flicked it on, and all she could hear was emergency broadcasts. As far as Philadelphia and Manhattan, at this time we have confirmed to make a spell detonation. She smashed the radio with her hoof, not waiting to hear all the rambling of the details, and bolted out of the doors, where others were already gathering in the streets in panicked, jumbled messes. Heavy sirens and alarms began to blare, telling her the war was about to end the bad way, and she needed to get to safety. Her heart was beating out of her chest. All she could do was whimper and panic as she jumped into a full gallop out of her quaint little apartment in her quaint little town, used to house workers and members of the Ministry Research Center. Like usual, running for about twenty seconds, and she was terribly out of breath. By the time she reached the line to the stable, she noticed that she, all she had with her was her ID badge, which she basically had glued around her neck. She cursed herself, thinking of going back for her books, maybe even some of her research and her reading glasses. But then the gravity of the situation roared on her like a manticore, and she face-hoofed. Ma'am? The light blue unicorn mare off to the side, holding a checklist, nudged her. Lexicon, level 2 clearance on Project... Broom? Oh, yes, I, uh, that's me. I'm sorry, I, I just... 
A commotion caught her eye. Even as one of the soldiers practically yanked her out of the line and pushed her to the front, trying to get her through the gates. Please! If not me, then please, at least my son! Please, there is room! I know there is! A mare was practically on her knees, begging a soldier in front of her to be let through. She was indeed correct. Two whole research groups were over in Canterlot. The stable had an abundance of room at the moment. The soldier shook his head with a cold and stoic glare. It was clear he did not like this, but still the stallion had seen war a dozen times over. This was another day in the life. VIP first. Get back in line, ma'am. I'm not going to tell you again. The soldier glanced Lexicon's way for only a moment, as the unicorn mare pushed her through the gate. She had to duck to one side to avoid running into the large, triple-barreled Gatling gun off the soldier's battle saddle. Another soldier pushed her firmly up the path, pointing wordlessly as Lexicon could see the mare's little colt looking around scared. The little thing had no idea what was happening, though in his defense even Lexicon was unsure, or rather she knew full well. Only she was in such a state of shock that she was not fully capable of grasping it just yet. She made her way up the path, trying to do just what she needed to do, and suddenly she flinched at the loud sound of four and five rapid gunshots. She clenched her eyes shut and tried to force herself to believe everything was okay. But she choked and went cold when she heard the cold scream, Mommy! Going numb, she slowed. She felt cold and awkward in her own body. Whatever was going on, her mind refused to believe it, and she didn't want to. Her stomach sank, and her limbs were like unfeeling rubber. No matter how much she breathed in, it wasn't enough. Light-headed and with blurry vision, she b barely noticed being shoved to a metal platform. She could hardly focus on the massive green light going up in the distance. Her every sense was slowly vanishing. The light began to fade, and she felt something noticeably painful and cold on her cheek. She could not tell how much time had passed, but in a few moments she could hear again. This one goes out to pod 4472E. Don't worry about stabilizing her. The pod will do everything we need. The pony holding her flinched a little in surprise when Lexi stirred. What? What? What happened? Is... what? Calm down. We just need to get you in your designated pod. It will cleanse you of your radiation levels. You come down just in time. If you were even a minute later, you would not have even woken up. Just sit back and relax. The vault has everything you could possibly need. Just relax and enjoy your time here. It's going to be a very productive time. Trust me. Not only did she not feel the need to disagree, but she did not feel the ability to. She was still in the tail end of what she did not know was a panic attack. All the eggplant-colored earth pony was capable of doing was nodding weakly and simply allowing herself to be dragged down a hallway, through many twists and turns, to a room full of large egg-shaped containers. She could already see ponies sleeping inside peacefully. Don't worry, ma'am. You spend the night in one of these, and you're clean and fit as possibly could be. No worries at all. Just lay down, keep calm, and try and get some much-needed rest. The technician smiled at Lexi, trying to reassure her. She nodded, still shaken, but she tried to focus on literally anything else. As the mare who helped her into the pod closed the door, Lexi pulled up her pretty disgruntled feelings towards her, leaving her library at home. But that only made her feel worse. She could still hear the little cold screaming for his mother. It sent a cold shock through her body, however. It was oddly too cold. Something else was going on. She could feel it even more cold than such an emotionally chilling experience could give her. Something from the edge of her mind called to her. She was not a scientist, she was a historian, just as her cutie mark showed. An ancient scroll and a magnifying glass. She may not have been a scientist, but she was pretty smart. Sure, there was a chance of radiation not being clear nearly enough for what they were saying for her to need some sort of isolation pod. Furthermore, every pony present was being herded into one. Her dazed attention caught ice crystals forming on the glass of the door. Her heart skipped a beat. This was not a recovering chamber. She could identify talismans in the pod, none of which were for cleansing radiation. 
These were like the slow-release spells enchanted talismans had for elemental healing, life support, and a few others. It was not a medical pod or a recovery pod. Cryogenic suspension! She felt too cold. She tried to fight it. Her hooves hammered on the glass weakly, far too weakly. She knew she was not strong, but this was far too weak. Adrenaline was keeping her awake, but only just barely. She watched the icy screens get more and more clouded and dark, her eyes fluttering, and she tried her best, futile efforts, to do anything other than just lay down and be frozen. These were her last actions before darkness claimed her. It felt like it was just a fitful sleep. She had no idea what was going on. She only knew that she was waking up and was not very happy. It felt like some pony twisted her stomach into a knot and then proceeded to beat it with a stick. Every inch of her was sore and in ten different kinds of pain at once. She finally woke up fully, coughing and retching. She saw nothing but the frost coating her pod she was in. Shaking with more than just cold, she scraped her hoof over the frosted window. It didn't do much to help. Instead, she worked on to try and figure out how to open the pod. This too was fruitless. That is, the efforts were pointless. The pod soon opened on its own, apart from anything she controlled. She came to a logical conclusion that she had awoken because the pod was programmed to wake her up at this specific time. Filling out onto the filthy floor, she coughed and hacked, her heart racing as she opened her eyes. She could feel something attached to her flank. Swooping a hoof across her flesh, she quickly located what felt like a small box attached to a set of tubes and wires firmly set into her left flank. Letting out a yelp, she tore it off and whimpered. It was full of needles. This combined with the racing and pounding in her heart led her to believe it was the machine's wake-up call. Hello? Any pony? She sat with her chest heaving while she waited for her vision to fully clear. Unfortunately, this was not in the cards for her. No matter how much she wished for her vision to clear, it remained vaguely blurry. It was like she needed her reading glasses. Great. No longer just farsighted. Hello? Any pony? Any pony at all? She stumbled around, feeling with her hooves. Something was very wrong. Not only was there no pony to assist her, but the floor itself felt extremely dirty. No medical personnel to help her, or any pony else up and about. There was no pony around to sweep the floors. The first conclusion she came to was that her pod had been moved into deep storage, and it failed. Safety protocols would wake her up to prevent her death. No problem. I'll just find an alarm to activate, and they'll know some pony's here. And I can get a moon dam explanation of why I was stuffed in a freezer. She growled, hoping that a moderate-leveled researcher had enough authority to make such a demand. She continued to feel about until she found something she suspected to be useful. A metal surface moving upward like a podium. Ah, hello there. She continued feeling it up until she found what she was looking for. A switch. She could see it was a bright, blurry red, even in the darkened state of the room. Without much hesitation, she pulled on the switch and instantly she saw flashing lights, though she heard no alarms. She hoped at least something was a little useful. Going back to the floor, she continued to feel around, trying to find more noisy things that could make a ruckus with. Had they given her even a little warning, she could have been a little more content with just setting off one alarm. She was nothing if not 110% dedicated to her projects, the Ministry and Equestria. She did not deserve to be stuffed in a freezer without any sort of consent for Celestia knew how long. Lexicon was a very smart and calm pony. She was rather proud of her temperament. Even when being treated very unfairly, she usually remained calm and level-headed, even when the next pony over was foaming at the mouth in rage. However, this was a bit much. Her hooves smoothed over the ground until it bumped into something she could see wobbled a bit. It was a dull white color and had a soft, clackety sound. Poking around with just a little more, she nearly squealed with joy as she noticed something of great benefit. Glasses, right there on the ground. Perching them on her nose and tilting her head back, she blinked. It was still a bit off, not her exact needed prescription, 
but she could still see well enough. Even with a small crack through the left lens, she looked back down to where she had found it, and her heart stopped dead. The dull white clackety thing was a pile of bones. Not just bones, but very clearly a pony's skull and ribs. She let out a screech and fell back. Her head was fuzzy, and she was back on the brink of another panic attack. What really pushed her over the edge was a hoof smacking into a window above where she now lay. Passing out, she only stirred again when she was shaken awake. Wake up, damn it! She came to with a shriek and huddled into the fetal position. Hey, calm down! It's all right! The voice was male and strong. It took a few moments, but she recognized it. She didn't know it by heart, but she knew it from somewhere. Y you you're with the Ministries. The, um, with the Ministry of Magic? The, um, whatever it was project? Lysacon stuttered. Fear, and generally how she was feeling, clogging up her ability to remember. Looking at him, she took in his features as best she could. His pale blue coat, the kind of unicorn that most certainly got picked on when he was a colt, but now did good look, work for the Ministries. If her memory was accurate enough, he was actually one of the more higher-ranked individuals in the area. It was likely he worked with her mother, and maybe even directly with Twilight Sparkle. Yes, Wax Seal's the name. What happened? Is any pony else here? She rose shakily to her hooves and looked around. The room was in utter ruins. The only thing of note to see was the broken and worn stable around them, and the two open pods. But her eyes caught something. The red lever she had pulled was connected to the other open pod. She did not trigger an alarm. She opened another pod. Luckily, it looked like it be one of the only other functioning pods with some pony inside. I have no idea. I just woke up and stumbled around until I found these glasses so I could see again. They froze us. Yeah, I noticed. Wax grumpily replied before looking back at the pile of pony bones. We've been put away a very long time. Swallowing the fright in her throat, Lexi nodded. At that state of decomp, it has to have been at least a decade. I mean, you can get bones that clean in about a year, but not that dry. And the floor, this place hasn't been tended to in that long, but why? She did her best not to full-on freak out, but he seemed to be in the same boat as her, just a little less squeamish about it. Well, it depends. We were frozen when the bombs fell. It is likely this facility was damaged in the blast or something, quickly preceding it. We need to get out of here and find out just how much of Equestria is left, how much damage was done. We know it's been, at the very least, ten years. Maybe the vault didn't protect every pony and only the pods survived. Well, most of the pods. We will only know by poking around and finding out for ourselves. She nodded. But the inside, she was screaming. She did not want to go anywhere or do anything. She wanted guards and stable tech workers to show up and help before she could sip a nice, hot cup of tea and then shout at whoever was in charge. But some pony else was here to take charge, so choosing not to deviate from the usual, she fell in line. After about ten minutes of searching, they both came to the conclusion that this room held nothing else of value. There were two unopened pods, but the readout displayed that the occupants had died years ago. So, stepping back, she let Wax Seal lead the way out of the room. The only noteworthy thing they found were more pony skeletons. The events were a little disturbing, though. They were mostly in small groups in the corners of the rooms, with one or two further away from the others, as if they had died trying to move away from the group. The annoying part was that each door was tightly sealed. Wax Seal had tried to open one with magic, just so that they could pass through. There was an odd sensation that came out of the large rooms from the equally large halls. It came to her rather fast. They had left the big room and gone into a hallway, found a two-way split, going right instead of straight. They then came to a pair of a uh, far right, three-way split. She distinctly remembered going straight down the three-way path. However, she paused long enough for a face hoof when she saw a pod in one of the hallways. It was empty, but very clearly connected to a forklift. 
These things could be moved anywhere, provided some pony had the right equipment. Looking around a little more, she gradually found the courage to look into one of the pile of bones. Unlike the others, these bones looked very thoroughly damaged, as if they were chewed on by something small. Shifting the bones a little more, she found another pair of glasses that were even less suited for her, and the big score of the day. A pip buck! Oh, it's still in working order, I think. Lexi t shook it clean of the bones, hesitating quite a bit before putting it on, which was surprisingly easy to do. The normal locking mechanism was gone, filed off and replaced with a simple latch. Eventually, she powered it on and looked it over as it began to hum to life. Oh, that's not a standard model. Look at that, it's been modified. Looks like it was modified by some pony other than a proper stable tech technician. Wax Seal tapped the side to show her some of the exposed elements. It was hastily and messily rigged up for a few interesting new bits and tricks, though nothing she could recognize as immediately useful. However, the device let out a soft beep, and she could read the program updating right before her eyes. As if projecting directly into her vision, she could see it. Eyes forward sparkle. She smiled and gave a soft giggle at the name. She had not seen or heard about it before. Then again, she was far too busy to even take note of a pip butt back before the bale fire, which still haunted her. She was about to ask Wax Seal what they should do next, when red lights blasted into existence in her vision. I the eyes forward, sparkle lit up, red like a solid bar. Hey, what's the red for? Did I break something, or is it malfunctioning? They barely got out of the hall before sealing the door shut. Lexicon hammered on the lock, despite the threat obviously not being able to open the door. Wax struggled to remain upright. Blood gushing from the large chunks missing in his back, barrel, and left foreleg. But he still did his best to buck the vent, trying to warp it so that they couldn't get through there. He let out his breath, watching bloody spittle trickle to the ground before he collapsed. Lexicon shivered before hyperventilating. Wh what was that? What were those? I'm pretty sure those were Paris sprites, but... Wax Seal paused, coughing up a wet, bloody mess. He grimaced, looking over his wounds. The thing had literally eaten halfway into his chest. He was very confident he was going to die without a healing potion in the next few minutes. Normally, he would have been utterly terrified, but at the moment, there was an odd peace that flowed over him. It was like the normal fears of pain of his life had vanished. This was it. Nothing else to worry about. It would change somehow. This is probably not an isolated incident. There's likely to be dozens of related terrible mutations. Which would imply either the radiation of the Veilfire bombs was much higher and more intense than before, or it's been a lot longer than a decade. He let out another torrent of bloody coughs and fell into a rail alongside the wall. He looked away from her into a badly broken lab with no lights. Lexicon turned and opened her mouth to speak. Instead, watching in horror as something shot out of the darkness like a cartoon frog's tongue, catching Wax Seal and yanking him back into the shadows. There was a sudden, messy, loud gulp, and something shifted into the darkness. And the fight on Lexicon's fight-or-flight meter was broken. It seemed as though the fight was thoroughly replaced with faint. However, Celestia smiled down at her at that moment, and flight was the only thing left. She took off like a bat out of hell pounding the buttons on each door so hard that her hoof began to crack by door two. Her vision narrowed, and she only saw the next door and the next. Bursting out, she finally came to a stop where the stable walls were torn ajar before her. Just beyond the heavy breach in the wall, there was an elevator. A broken elevator. But thankfully, the air was filled with the sound of rushing water, and in the corner of the room, she spotted a heavily rusted metal plate, clearly leaking water. Plowing into it the moment she reached it, the wall of crumbling into nothing, she rushed and rushed until it was likely that whatever killed Wax couldn't follow, even if it was interested. Rushing forward was foolish in her state, and she had no idea just how badly it was about to backfire. The large, bubbling underground river she was forcing her way down had very little room left in it, and had very little any form of air, and the current was rushing fast and hard. Her panic had not gone, but her adrenaline was beginning to fade. 
A ragged breath was playing against her as there was less and less room for air in this near pitch black cave. It didn't take long before she was forced under by the current, and even with her efforts she did not get a chance to pass out from oxygen deprivation. Her vision was filled with darkness of the cave that she was sucked under. She could not tell how fast she was going. She could only see things zooming past her. She whipped about to see an outcropping of stone within the current. She saw nothing but stars when she smashed into it. She barely felt the second impact as the turret current tore around in the next corner, taking her limp form with it. Sputtering and coughing, and finally vomiting at the last amount of water, Lexi opened her eyes. She felt bruised and battered, which made sense because she had been ravaged by the raging water that she could vaguely see splurting from the cliff side. Now out of the water and not outright bursting with fear and panic, she could clearly hear the click-click of her new pip-buck. Leaning upright, she pushed her glasses further up her nose, thanking Celestia that she somehow still had them on. She shakily got to her hooves, and with no real direction to go, she began to walk. Wherever she was, the land looked utterly destroyed. Nothing was growing, and unlike the world she grew up in, and until just an hour ago, she knew, the land was dark and cloudy. Where are all the pegasi? And... Oh, hell. This is the worst-case scenario, isn't it? She asked no pony. She kept moving, seeing only more of the same. She knew that the clicking of her pip-buck meant radiation, and she knew it was wise to move away from areas like that. However, she was quite shocked at how often she found radiation so blatantly everywhere. On the verge of simply crumbling into a pile and giving up, she suddenly found her light in the darkness. She poked through the bushes into a clearing to see three other ponies. Her heart suddenly leapt at the sight. Equestria's not dead after all! Quickly, she dashed up, shouting and calling for their detention. She was just within ten yards when she noticed they had been turned, bearing weapons. But the middle one was smiling at her, a smile that brought a chill down her heart. She slowed, instinct rather than logic screaming at her. Hello there. You're a sad too cute to be out here in the wasteland. The center stallion stepped forward, giving that frightening smile again. Lexi's mind screamed at her. This was all kinds of wrong. They looked like they just climbed out of a documentary on the dark streets of Manhattan. Those ponies practically looked like they were auditioning for a chance to serve life in Hightower. Lexicon could not find words to say. She just slowly and fearfully began to back away. Oh, no. No, 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 you're not leaving. The stallion, to her left, licked his lips with a dirty smile coming closer. He didn't stop that smile. Boss, we can have some fun first, right? The center stallion chuckled and nodded. Then, quite suddenly, his head exploded like a ripe tomato against a hard surface. She shrieked and began to backpedal at top speed, but didn't look away in time to avoid seeing the remaining stallions scattered and start taking pot shots into the tree line. Though even this stopped the stallion on the right, took three rapid shots at his barrel. Each round tore the bloody fleshy hole and turned his insides into puree. The last stallion took off quickly before he lost a hoof and before he hit the ground or even had a chance to scream, a large bullet plunged through the back of his head and shattered his front teeth as he continued. Shivering and rapidly looking to and fro, trying to see where the shots came from, the primal desire to know where the hunter is, as the need to run the other way was screaming at her head. However, despite her desperate fears and panicked heart, she managed not to lock up and pass out when a somewhat small griffin landed two feet from her, as if she did not even exist. Flinching so hard that she nearly fell over, the mare stuttered and gasped before distancing herself from him with a quick couple scoots. You know... He began without so much as sparing her a glance. You won't live out here very long if you come run into slavers. He casually made his way over to the dead ponies without a care in the world. She shook her head, trying to comprehend the words he spoke. S slavers Even the word slave was one she heard, if 
only in the most ancient of history lessons, but always reference the most absolute evil of tyrants and primitive of ages. Her mind was so taken back by the use of the phrase that she did not notice the griffin walking up to the down slaver pony and draw a machete. Well, then my, well, my savior, I, I'm in desperate need of, ha. Her eyes went wide as he brought the large blade down on the neck of the dead pony and collected the head. Lexicon promptly vomited, collapsing and shivering. What do you think you're doing? That was a pony! She screamed hoarsely. He glanced back at her, almost confused. It was a slaver. I was hired by a mare down in Pasternville, who was his private slave about two years ago. She survived, escaped, and hired me to kill him. Now I, as requested, am bringing back proof that I did the job as hired. And finally, when I turn this in and get the bottle caps, I'll have come full circle. Wait, no. I'll get the bottle caps, go get drunk, and then I'll have come full circle. She honestly had no words. The poor earth pony just stared vacantly at the griffin as he gruesomely looped the string through the severed head's mouth and out the neck before tying it off. Trying to calm herself down, she slipped into a simple logic default. Realizing that this griffin was currently the one living sentient thing she was aware of existed, and it was not currently trying to murder her, she pushed aside everything she could manage to come up with quickly. Griffin, you, you p please, you have to help me. I need to get... Kroos, not Griffin, unless you want me to shoot you. Names are important. Or should I call you Mud Pony? She took a step back and swallowed, trying to further calm herself. Gross, then. Please, I need to get back to Canterlot, or whatever the center of the civilization is. Equestria, if it still exists, may very well need me. He looked at her quizzically for a moment. Taking in her caution-laden words, she did not try to hide that she didn't know. But, in those words, she made it clear that she was lost and needed help. It doesn't exist anymore. Head that way, and you'll find what you need. I need to turn this in before it starts to smell. Well, smell worse. His blatant response on the status of Equestria shook her from her solid, logical mindset. Wait! No, please! D no, take me with you! I need help. I have no idea where I am or what's going on. Please, you have to take me with you. No. I have plenty of better things to do than not fly from here to shantytown with some whining mare. She could feel her chances of making it were quickly slipping away. Panic started to trickle at the back of her throat. She rushed up to him and he noticeably changed his stance. Please, you have to help me. If you let me just go like this, it's practically killing me. You have to help me. Please. Please. Stop that. It's going to get you killed faster than me not going with you. Her logical calm was all but evaporated, and she only had the ability to panic left. Please. He sighed. One help coming right up. His talon seized her shoulders, and his head drew back. The last thing she saw was his feathered head of Kroos, the griffin, rushing up to meet her forehead before her senses plunged into a pained darkness. Footnote. No level up. You might want to do something other than freaking out. Quest Perk added. Pathetic. Individuals in the wasteland are far more hesitant to open fire on sight. Your diminished physique and open fear of just about everything labels you as not even worth of the bullet.